Uh, good afternoon. Once again, welcome back to British Library. Thank you again for being here for this amazing day of talks. We're we'll very grateful for everyone who's taken part so far. Um, this exhibition, Beyond the Baseline 500 Years of Black British Music, also is a UK-wide story. Uh, London is so, so, so dominant, but an amazing, full of talent. But the country is also. And the exhibition, if you've been to it, features everything from Glasgow to Nottingham to Bristol, uh, many other cities besides, and especially Birmingham, uh, features heavily. And, you know, Birmingham is the second city, and, but it's as vibrant as London in its own way. And today you're going to hear more about that. We're absolutely delighted to team up with Punch Records who dominate the scene in Birmingham. There are many, many, many others besides, but they are such a creative and powerful organisation from record shops and much more besides. They also have created um, a whole project called Legacy, which you're going to hear about. And I'm going to hand over to uh, the programme manager for Punch Records, uh, Nikki Rigon, to open things up, and then we'll see a film, and then there's a great panel to follow. With. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. Um, so my name's Nikki Rigon. I am head of programme for Punch Records. Um, we are an arts and music organisation based in Birmingham. We tour artists, develop artists, and commission new artwork. Um, and one of the pieces of artwork that we've commissioned recently is this project named Legacy. I'm just going to put a bit of context behind what we're about to talk about. So, as John mentioned, Birmingham is the UK's second city. We've got a population of 1.2 million people. Um, it is the youngest population of people in Europe and is one of the most diverse populations across the UK. Um, so for that reason, we have a ridiculous amount of music of different cultures, different sounds that come out of it. And we have artists such as UB40, Pato Banton, um, and many more who, who've just like paved the way for so many artists to come after them. Um, we have, since the millennium, um, had way more genres of music come from the city. So you've had things like grime and trap and everything that comes behind that. And we've worked with a team of artists, really cool people, to document how that came about, what it means for the city and what it looks like going forward um, in a book and a film with film series. And we're going to show you episode one of that now so you can get a little taste of what that might look like. If you want to see the rest of the series, um, that's online and you can buy the book outside of the shop afterwards. Birmingham, home to a legacy of music that has helped shape the world. Infused with the rich sounds of reggae and ska that's graced these shores since the early 1960s. As the music scene grew, so did the political and social tensions in the city. This led to protests, racial tension and even riots. But despite this, the black music scene in Birmingham continues to flourish and has given birth to some of the most iconic sounds in history. Legacy is a journey of discovery, unearthing the stories of the trailblazers that have paved the way for future generations. Now it's time for their stories to be told. Pioneers for me, I'd say the first ones were the jungle MCs for me, like MC Lenny, Bassman, Long John, Ransky. And then aside of that, um, the early hip hop groups like M Asylum and stuff like that, and MD7, um, garage wise. Let me see. Nah, we were the guys. Yeah. 
Smooth FM in conjunction with Teen Splash, Old School Foundation, Birmingham Under 18s Dance. You show me happiness, part two. Yeah? This is a Smooth FM dance. MC lineup DAZ, Veda, Maka MC, DEV, Doctor, Hyper, Flavor, PED, Smiler, Telly, Badness. The basic foundation of modern UK music is the sound system, and these guys do not get any credit for what they built. You take away your Wasifers, your Saxons, and, and people like that, and the, the basically, um, I don't even know how much of a UK scene there would be. Whilst I was at secondary school in Ghana, reggae was a really big thing. And one of the most popular bands was a group from Birmingham called Steel Pulse. And Steel Pulse actually had a legendary album called Handsworth Revolution. The theme was Birmingham throughout the album and its environment and how it contributed to things. So that was my first discovery because I was in, in, in Ghana, having been born in the UK, um, grown up in London, and I was hearing music that I presumed was from London and discovered it was from a place called Birmingham, and I became a huge fan. The baddest MCs in the, yeah. in the city, them time there, it's Vader, Vader Brass, Badness, Badness, Devil, the Power Hill Queen, your Vader, Badness, Ace One, um, Brasco, Loki, Power Hill, Graveyard, Vortex. First people that I started hearing officially from Birmingham spitting bars was like Graveyard and Midlands Mafia. Cold Red. Midlands Mafia, have I said Midlands Mafia? Yo, Mate, Brasco, Devil Man. When I was young in Birmingham, I think it was called Graveyard Crew. Then you get like Midlands Mafia, you know what I mean? There was loads of crews, so obviously you start looking up to them growing up, like, yo, that's what I want to do. Might have been Devil Man, though. Might have been Devil Man. Because he was what, man was what I was skanking to. Devil Man, when I first heard his voice and just how he was spitting, it just sounded crazy to me. That's why you might see me on a high one, see me on a sex and long time a lie pong, yo tell you me high one, so I want. I think um, it was his song that he had Chinese tail. It, it was not, no of us, it wasn't similar to anything else I'd ever heard. Pitches, aesthetics, his vocals, that some of the things that he's saying in it, I, I didn't even know that that was a genre in it. And I was just like, this is just sick. Like, it just, it just captivated me straight away. And in Vader, it was his bars and his flows he was using. Don't be stupid, what do you think this is? Big up Jamal, best wishes to SBTV, blessed for the village. Um, so I'd say two bars. Um, Vader was like, I rep Mafia, but it ain't 3-6. Old school, like, forgetting my PE kit. And I was like, oh, shiz. And then Devil Man, he had a bar. It was like, I don't like two-faced people, like one with a dry face, one with cream on. I was like, yeah, these guys, they're, they're my favorite, basically. For me personally, you know, I'd say, Bass man, you know, bass man straight up, nobody else, you get me? Bass man by definition, it is basically, is basically an instrument. No one sounded like bass man when bass man came out. Everybody looked up to him. He's what he, like, birthed a lot of grime MCs in Birmingham and even out of Birmingham, you know what I'm saying? Bass man was the first man that made me think, yo, I want to jump on this music thing. Twenty eighth for the tenth, two thousand and four. That's when a little genius was born. Straight out of the womb, I was the first child, so my parents were amazed with what they saw. They were nineteen back then. Check in a two-bedroom flat, I wouldn't say we were poor, but my mum and dad knew what they signed up for. And I guess you can see I was born to perform. Yeah, my dad did music, always wrote bars, started producing these beats. He was hard, and I remember them days back then. There was always an MC chilling in my yard. Them MCs were deadly and soon to be stars. Born into grind from the very, very start. So where I come from, I guess it was different. None of them MCs were ever gonna chart, cause we weren't from London. Man was from Brum, not with the big names. Man's from the slum. So it was hard for most men to get heard. There was only one station for you to get spun. Everybody's out here and they're trying to get heard. I'd say from my generation, there's a lot of people who are oblivious to all the 
old school grime MCs and rare tear tear from my city. And that's why I feel like it's my purpose as a young grime MC to almost educate people, to show people that there's other music other than drill and Afro beats. And really we've had this foundation in the city of people who are from where we are from for years, whether you get me, but people my generation don't really know them too tough. Yeah, man, I just found this uh, this old school um, grime time pack that I, that I made. Uh, flood the hell, I think it was like 2000 and six two thousand and seven on this one you got d double footsie devil man fiasco deadly and then there's an interview that i did uh, with kano the people that i used to listen to and sort of look up to was you your nitrates your d double ep dj everton your andy chambers caprice your tommy jerry they're the birmingham ones generation x is um for all intents and purposes a family up until Silk, it was just purely Birmingham, and it was a purely multicultural street. Kids that had absolutely nothing and nothing to lose. With these times, grime were about, you know what I mean? 19, 98, 99. You know, I used to listen to them and just think, well, oh, yeah, man, these men are leveling. When, we, when Generation X hit Garage, no other MCs or DJs were working together as a team like that. They said DJs and MCs working together as a combination would never work. No one else is doing what we're doing. Nowhere else in the country. It is important to, to speak and acknowledge the founding fathers because at the end of the day, like, all right, so I'm going to just speak from a personal perspective. Like, any man that's rapping gangster shit in Brom, you wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for me, bro. I'll be honest. You, you, come, you come from, I'm like, I'm not, che not in a cheeky way, but I'm your dad, fam. Like, not in a cheeky way, blood, but like, yo, I'm the, I'm your father, blood, I'm your father, I started this shit, blood. You don't wanna see me get crazy up in this bitch, roll with the misfits, leave you with a limp, ain't talking about biscuits, I've done a lot of shit I ain't proud of. And, and a lot of the youths that started rapping, like, okay, the, a lot of, let's say, this generation now, they followed the older generations, yeah? Now, if you go back to a bit old, a bit older, even like Mist and all them, man, who do you think them man were following, bro? Them man were following me? Them man were following B6 Slash. They wanted to rap because of Slash. Mist is from Erdington, so he was definitely following the man, them. From managing young acts, like, I obviously, Smugsy's very young, Mowgli's very young. I think that they look to the kind of generation that just came before them. Um, so, like, they would be influenced by probably like the um, KB, like that kind of generation. But I don't think they really understand the generation that came before that, that influenced KB and people like that. The first case that I caught was in 03. Swear down everyone there snitched but me. I've even tried to a man from a cold D. Try disrespect straight beef, no cold feet. My age group's weird. Like, where it's weird is because I've always rolled with older people. Like I said, I was always the young one. So when you're saying doctor, Doctor could be sitting in this room and I wouldn't know it's Doctor, you know. But you say his name, I know who Doctor is. Remember, I'm, I'm at the stage now where I'm not the kid no more. I used to be the youngest geezer around. Every room that I was in, I used to be the youngest person. Now I'm not, so I'm seeing how quick things shift and I'm in that position where I'm, I look at certain people and I think, no, not even look at certain people. I'm surprised when certain of the youngers held me up a certain way. I think, oh, I swear you know about me, and I think. But I'm forgetting, like, everyone's been young at a stage and everyone grows and everyone gets older, so it's only keeping it real when you're gonna big up the people that come before you, especially if you've got memories involving them people's music or involving them people. Brasco, how I mentioned Brasco, Brasco. Them days, Brasco is a full celebrity. Like, it's not no game. Like, what you would call a celebrity right now, that's what man had in the hood. They definitely know about us, because when we was popping, it was the thing, it was ringing. Like, music was popping in Birmingham, so I would find it hard for the people that are up and coming now and coming up through Birmingham to not have knew about us. If I roll out with my dogs, there'll be riots. Can't stand up for these channels, they're biased. I roll out with the mask, no Myers. Man get dash on the floor, no flyers. I'm one of the best MCs, that's a fact. I got the grind scene and a lot, no pliers. Don't move digital. If we're talking the pioneers, I don't think the youngers know who they are. I'm not sure if they know about, you know, the foundation. I'm not sure, because I don't really hear them speaking about Birmingham man in their interviews or, you know, kind of, yeah, mentioning that or even working with them, really. I think a lot of the new youths now, they, they respect a lot of monetary. If you ain't got a big chain, big whip, big this, big that, but yeah, they have to remember that the era that man grew in, 
there wasn't really money in, in the game like that. So I don't think the pioneers get the respect they truly deserve. We've got to give a um, salute to the people's like, the, the people that done it before us and things like that because I felt like at a time when we was doing music from Birmingham, we never had nobody to look up to and think, whoa, my man smash it for music. Whereas in London, there was a lot of influence and a lot of inspiration where you could look at MCs that you've probably listened to from a kid and be like, wow, my man's driving a Ferrari. You get me? My man's got a Rolls Royce. My man's, my man's killing it. My man's got jewelry. My man's got this. Where we didn't have that. We're the first of that generation from Birmingham, I'd say. Like the likes of like Zola, bass developers. What? If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't. When I'm on a microphone, there's no challenger. The flow's hot like it's coming from my ear. I wouldn't do any of that, because that was him. You know what I mean? They call me Zola. He used to sing and have all that melody in his bars and. He was my favorite MC when I was I just got the phone call, yeah, getting told that Spiral's doing a set. That's all I remember thinking, Spiral's doing a set. I'm thinking, yeah, safe, I'm gonna go through. I've done a couple Spiral sets before, so I think there's gonna be a couple MCs there, sick. And then I get to the room to see all the legends from Birmingham, bro. Like, man, remember watching on my little square TV, yeah, that my dad had. I remember watching set sets, C4 off track set and stuff like that, and seeing all these men in the room. So, be in, to be in the same room as these men and spray bars with these men. Legendary business, bro. legendary business. So what you used to have, you used to have terrestrial television where there would be channels specifically dedicated to putting on UK music, specifically urban music. So you had a lot of grime, a lot of hip hop, a little bit of garage. Garage was kind of fading out by then. Do you know what I mean? And uh, Channel U was the, was the fucking arbiter of any UK music that you could fucking hear. Well, to be fair, I think we were, I don't like to say we were the first, but, you know, I think it was Morris Star, uh, Slash, but after them, like, we was the first people from Birmingham, like, rap group, to be, like, regular on Channel U and Flavor, Cable TV, Sky TV. We just saw. So, uh, Casey Bailey, I invite you on stage first. And then we've got Daps on the map. Roxanne. And Daniel Alexander. <laughs> Um, so I'll just let you guys introduce yourselves first. If you want to tell everyone who you are and kind of what you do. Um, Casey? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Casey Bailey, and I'm a writer, poet, rapper from Birmingham. Um, and was the Birmingham Poet Laureate 2020 to 2022. Hello, everyone. My name is Daps on the map. I'm a grime MC slash singer. I've been doing it for over... 10 years now, and yeah, still fighting the fight, still fighting the battle. Yeah. I'm Daniel Alexander. Hello, everyone, as well, by the way. Um, I'm a filmmaker. Spent the last two years trying to put all of that together as well. And um, from Birmingham, I'm very <coughs> passionate about telling stories, especially ones that capture our history. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, Hello. Uh <clears throat> Hello everyone, I'm Roxanne. Sorry, my voice is really deep. Um, I'm from Birmingham too. I've lived in London for 14 years, so my accent um, isn't as brummy as everyone else is, but I am an artist and um, a model in London. So, uh, to start off with, Daniel, do you want to tell us what Legacy is, how it came about, and what you wanted to get from the project? Yeah, so Legacy is, essentially, it was a love letter to my city. So, for me, it was important that um, well, growing up, I started to notice as I'm getting older, there's so much of our history that is just, it's just fading. Like, as you know, unfortunately, as people are getting older and people are starting to die around you and the stories that are coming from a first-hand account are just missing. So for me, it was very important to be like, I grew up in an era where music was a massive influence, especially grime music in Birmingham. And we're getting to an age now where we're starting to see so many of our pioneers just die. 
disappear or get, get into circumstances where they can't speak for themselves and other people are starting to kind of tell our narrative. So for me, that was the inspiration. I was just like, I want to make sure that we capture this story now so that the people that have actu actually started and kind of put, laid the, the, the foundation for the music scene that is so popular now in Birmingham, making sure that they get the flowers that they deserve. That's literally what this film was about. It was about making sure that they had their flowers. There was no real initial view in the beginning to even try and say, oh, we're making a documentary for popular and general consumption. It was literally a case of, I want to hand this film over to the people that have laid the foundations for the artists that are being popular and, and having a success today so they can show this to their kids and be like, look, look, son, look, daughter, we made this. You know what I mean? So that's what that film was about. Daps, do you, do you want to talk about um, how growing up in Birmingham has shaped your sound and where that has come from? Is it parents' influence? Is, like, where does it come from? Yeah. He, he has come from parents. Uh, my dad, who used to listen to a lot of like roots rock music, a lot of uh, what was he listening? What was I? Sorry, he's he's passed away a couple of weeks ago, and he's fresh, so I'm listening to all of his songs and stuff like that. So he used to listen to a lot of John Holt, and he used to listen to a lot of Slim. What was his name? Slim, Slim Smith. There we go. Yeah. Uh, conversation, we just need a conversation. That that was his tune. So he used to listen to all of that. And if you listen to those type of beats, it's a very doom, 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 doom. It's that kind of roots rock music. So like, I think if you listen to my music, it's a faster version of that because that's what I grew up on. And when I started to get a bit older, teenager, and started to listen to like music that my age group's listening to, it's just that, it's just a faster version. We're just, we're just speaking a bit faster, the beats are a bit faster, but it's the same essence, it's the same energy. So I feel like it's a fuse of my parents' uh, musical background and my age group's background of music. I think I just adapted both and fused them. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, <clears throat> Um, Roxanne, what do you think um, the importance of telling the story of grime is from a Birmingham perspective, now that you're in London? Kind of the same thing what Daniel was saying. It's a different experience, isn't it? All, all stories are an experience and a culture. And like you were saying, nobody's really flying the flag for the Birmingham culture and experience. Birmingham, like you said, it's the second biggest city, but we have so much culture. And we, in Birmingham, we were obviously we're big on culture and when I say that we're big on traditions we're family you know Marcus Garvey Day everyone comes out carnival doesn't happen a lot but everyone's there like we we come together as a people as well I think um, telling the grime the the grime story in Birmingham I guess it's different we didn't grow up with Wiley and have every you know Wiley who created it in London we didn't grow up and have all of those people so we would have one radio station that we would all listen to and then we had to um kind of make our own grime because mm -hmm. I, we were quite heavily um, Birmingham with Greyjard shift um, hip hop yeah. influence. So when everyone was down here writing 16 verses, uh, when I was writing music, everyone was writing songs mm -hmm. because all we had was the radio, MTV bass, mm -hmm. and you know, that's all you knew. Or um, for me, even now with making music, I've gone back to like roots. Yeah. As I'm getting older, I, when I was growing up, my black, my mom's Irish, my dad's black Jamaican. The Irish is like the, the um, the high violins, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and then you've got, for my family, it was more like Capleton. Yeah. Bar, slow them, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone going crazy. Yeah. So hence, with the, sorry, with the, um, <laughs> my voice is quite harsh on music. So yeah, I guess, but back to your thing, I think it's important for us to tell our version of events. It's like, we all love Jamaica, but you have to listen to their music to feel like you're a part of the Jamaican mm. culture and you're there. So I guess we're just trying to make people feel a part of us because Birmingham, we get a bad slack. We're kind of like, we're labelled like the ghetto city of the England and people are scared or they don't want to come or they're scared to put nights on and support Birmingham talent when, yeah, we do have that, but compared to London, mm -hmm. it's not, we've got two crews, you've got them at every train station. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Respectfully, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, so... Um, Casey, how, like, how did you go about writing the book from your perspective, I suppose? So for me, it was interesting because <clears throat> as someone who grew up as a grime MC, okay. in a lot of those spaces I was there, but I'm conscious that I weren't, I wasn't in every space, do you get what I mean? So there was an element of, I know this, 
and I can just write it and then there was an element of let me make sure I'm checking with this person and that person so I'll call people as Roxanne said the city at a certain time was very divided so I know I grew up on one side of Birmingham and we knew these MCs but I did have to call my people from the other side of Birmingham and say well, am I missing something here mm -hmm. because you know there might have been a man that you was listening to that didn't mm -hmm. get played on my side of town because he went from my side of town mm -hmm. so the process was about capturing what I knew but also making sure I didn't leave those gaps mm -hmm. where I felt like it was being missed out and we started with um, like this idea of chapters and, and that, that then kind of carried its own story because we had the clashes. We, had, we started with producers, but I kind of changed it to behind the boards because it's not just producers, it could be uh, engineers, it could, yeah. all them people played their part. It could be like spaces, like oxygen rooms. Um, so we wanted to capture like a full rounded story of where this all came from. And I think for me, the most interesting part to write was the moments so to write about Lady Leisha at Glastonbury, to write about mm -hmm. um, Zimbo doing the, the dream freestyle, mm -hmm. to write about JK being on power, you're sitting down watching power mm -hmm. and you hear that Thomas Mellor instrumental, you're like, is that JK on power? Mm -hmm. Like all those moments to me, they're like, even writing them give me goose pimples because mm -hmm. it's like, this is, this is where we've reached to and where we started from. Yeah, okay. So talking about moments, daps, um, I know you told some stories in the documentary, but yeah. what are some of the like pivotal moments that stand up to you, like from Birmingham's legacy of grime music? For me, yeah, like, like me, what, what or, are your like big moments? Like my big moments or yes. Birmingham's big moments? Yours. Mine. Uh, I'd done a song with my daughter when she was five, <laughs> and she was on the song, and the song was the biggest song I've ever done in my life, and uh, it brought me over to here. So people started from London started to pay attention to the sound and there was very, very like, it was a bit hard to believe how you've got a five-year-old on a grime song. The song's called Murder, when you've like, got a chance, listen to it. I know it sounds a bit mad, but it's not spelled <laughs> murder, M-U-R-D-E-R. -E it's spelled M-U-R-D-A-H. So it's like a different murder in the sense of like, whatever you're, whatever you're good at, make sure you kill it, make sure you be the best at it. So. I thought I'd bring my daughter on the song and she transformed that song to be a, like a really, really, it was the biggest song in my career, but I think I've only topped it a couple of years ago and I'd done that song in 2015 or something like that. So that was a big moment. Uh, there's a few, if I'm, there's a few, there's a few, there's a few, but I think that was the biggest one, if I'm gonna be totally honest, because it, it's my daughter, so it's timeless. You know mm. what I mean? Like, I, when I done my first, I done a headline show in 2016, and the last song I brought her out and had her in my arms. She's only five, I had her in my arms and she's doing her part and the oh. whole crowd, oh my gosh, man. The crowd, like, I don't think I've ever got a reaction like that, me personally. <laughs> in all the time I've performed, I've never got a reaction like that. Like, she blew every, everyone away. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely one of my highlights. I've been on tour with Kano. That's another highlight for me because he was one of the artists that I looked up to growing up as a as a young boy trying to do this music thing. I used to listen to Home Sweet Home and I was fully involved in Kano's. I think that's career. probably one of the best albums like, after Boy I'm, in the Corner. I was really a fan, like really a fan. I still, I still, I still am, but back then that that album shaped my whole teenage yeah. hood, teenage hood, you know what I mean? So uh, I've been on tour with him, so I was on a, like an eight-city tour with him, and he taught me about the game. He taught me about how to react to the crowd, when to speak to the crowd, when not to speak to the crowd, when to leave the crowd, when to give the crowd time to uh, be appreciative of you of your sound. Like he taught me so many tricks. So that was a, a monumental moment for me. And our last one, I'm not going to sit here all day. Last one is I've done an advert for Nissan, for my nan. Me and my nan done an mm, advert for Nissan. That. And that one is probably the most specialist one because she's passed away now. And whenever I w look at that video, I can always see that me and my nan, like I had to pick her up from the fish market and then we drove in a brand new micro and uh, I had to test out the car to her and play some of my tunes. So what do you think of this nan? You like this nan, you like that nan? And that one there, honest to God, whoever sorted that out for me at Nissan, God bless your soul because it's priceless, that is. It's mm. priceless. Honestly, God, that's priceless. So, and I, I got paid a fair bit for it as well. So, <laughs> that, that was, nice. that was, that was, yeah, there's a few, there's a few, but I, I, 
all of those things don't really matter. All that matters to me, really and truly, is the fact that I'm able to do something that I love and occasionally get paid for it. You know what I mean? Like, this is my passion. Like, uh, ever since I was 12, 13, I'm, I'm 36 now. Ever since I was 12, 13, this has been what, all I wanted to do. I remember I used to have arguments with my mum over it. Like, I had a, just had a daughter when I was 21, just had a newborn baby, and my mum was like, you want to leave work? And I was like, yeah, I want to I wanna just do music, mum. And she was like, I didn't raise no joke, man. Like, what are you on about? You're going to leave work and you've got a newborn baby, two months old. Like, what are you on about? You have to work. And my dad was saying, yo, leave him, man. Let Dan do what he wants to do, man. If he wants to do this thing, let him do his thing, man. And it's only like two, three years later, I said to her, you're not going to take me serious until you see me on the television. I said, when you see me on television, you'll take me serious. My mom's old school, and it? Like, <laughs> like, show me results, and I want to see something. Show me something. You want to do this music? Show me something. And uh, they went to Jamaica, and I picked them up. So it was at Gatwick Airport. I picked them up, and we tr drove back home. But I left the television on by accident. I, I just rushed out, and I left the television on. And when we got back in, it was on Channel U, or AKA. It turned to AKA. It was on Channel AKA. And who does my mom see on the TV? First thing she sees is me. And I just looked at her and I said, Mom, you're going to take me serious now. Are you going to take me serious now? Like, you know, I want to do this now. She said, Yes, my son, I'm going to take you serious now. So it's just little things like that. It's the biggest satisfaction in my whole life, just knowing that I've got validation from my parents because this is not an easy game to do being a recording artist, being an artist. And for my parents who love me so much, they didn't want me to do this. They wanted me to do something that is more certified. Money is going to come in. You're going to be able to look after Stable. your kids, look after mm. your life. You know what I mean? Like, go uni, Daniel, do something like that. That's what they wanted me to do. So the fact that I had the courage to do this and years later be able to sit in front of you guys and tell you guys my story, that's the satisfaction. And that's it, and you're done. Like, yeah. So, yeah, there's a few, but... I think being having the courage to do music outweighs all them little accolades that I was telling you about earlier, I think. Nice. If I'm going to be honest. Okay. Um, so, Rox, what, what about <coughs> Birmingham as a whole? Um, what do you think are some of the pivotal moments that have like, shaped what we see now? Yeah, for me, it's quite crazy. I'm just listening to you because I've been here for 14 years. I moved to London. <clears throat> Actually, I mean, let me say my age. Actually, no, I'm owning my age, my era. <laughs> yeah, I moved to London when I was 20. I'm 34 now. And for me at the time, it was only me and Lady Leisha, and there was no scene in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. This wasn't happening. So I had to move to London to get, you know, everyone, London, the record labels were there. If you want to do anything, you've got to go to London. So I blagged um, a job interview at EMI Records an internship, like an apprenticeship at a college. I didn't even know what an A&R was. I've never heard of it. We don't have record labels in Birmingham. I think I Googled it the night before, wrote down five bullet points like, okay, so they find talent, blagged the interview, I uh, got the job. So I was nine months on a, on a course, um, a college course where I was four days at a record label, one day at college at Westminster. And um, I kind of learned the scene. I didn't... I, I didn't understand. For me, I had nine months in London to like create this career for myself. And being in the record label, I was quite lucky because I'm sitting next to the people that make the decision. Like I'm making them coffee. I'm the little intern. So I my grind was here. But being a Brummie at that time, no one cared. No. I remember R.I.P. Jamal Edwards begging him, I'll pay for an F64. Nah, wasn't interested. Mm. Nah, nah, no one cared. Um, can, can I perform? I Love Lives, you name it, Urban mm. Developments. I was a part of all these little things. Mm. I remember even talking to Punch, like, please put us something on in London, just so no one was kind of letting me in until I went to a show. It was um, at the EMI record label, <clears throat> and they signed Professor Green, and they were, it was his um, listening, listening party. And Scream, we love, I love Scream at the time, the DJ. He was DJing, and Professor Green was taking ages to come to the stage. And they're like, go on, go on. And one of my friends said, I dare you, the mic's on. Just jump on that stage and start spitting. Scream's DJing, and that's what I did. I just jumped on the mic. Yo, my name's Roxanne. And then everyone was turning around like, oh, the coffee girl. The girl that makes the coffees actually raps. Oh, my God, you do this. So... At the time, every all the record labels that we had Professor Green at EMI and we had Tiny Temper and then there was Tinchy Strider, you know, all like the cheesy music where they would find someone from a black background and then get like a white ballad ah, yeah. and then that's the tune. Yeah. But, but we needed that to open the doors mm -hmm. for where we are now today. We needed that. We had to funnel black culture through to 
music industry really slowly. So then I jumped on kind of that grind and my things started to happen then. Although I would love, I loved going back to Birmingham and performing. Sometimes I would get booked for shows or Punch would always bring me back and being about. But I was gutted because I missed, um, I missed this, you see what you're talking about. I heard about it and I would come back and talk to Artie and other people that we know, but I wasn't in the heart of it when Birmingham, mm -hmm. when everyone started to shine their light on Birmingham, mm -hmm. I wasn't, I was down here yeah. trying to literally jumped in a bigger pond and, and went right back down to the, the, length, the end of the line, mm -hmm. where in Birmingham I was doing all right. I was one of the main names and then, mm -hmm. so that was kind of my grind. Sorry, I'm talking away, yeah, I forgot cool. the question. So, no. oh, but a moment, uh, a big part for me was, like when you say hearing about daps mm. and then even people like Screamer yeah. and we had baseline, Trilla, yeah. getting big. Mm. In London, I remember walking past and hearing someone going, Trilla, Tremaine, Trilla, mm. okay. Turning around like, what? Don't think you're a G-star just because you're wearing G-star. Mm. I know these lyrics. Mm. Um, and then I was, it, it just made me excited because one thing about Birmingham, what I love is that we're all very different and be, because we don't have any scene there, we don't really talk shit mm. respectfully in Birmingham. If you're a show off, no one really likes you. No one really, you know, in London, you can walk past a house that costs 10 million pounds. In Birmingham, the most expensive house is 5 million mm -hmm. or something like that. So mm -hmm. the levels are different. If you're like cocky and I'm better than everyone and wearing all gold, you'll get robbed or no mm -hmm. one cares. Mm -hmm. So in Birmingham, your music, no, it's true. So in Birmingham, sorry, your music kind of had to have substance. So we used to write songs and have concepts or talking about a girl or even Devil Man. We laugh at him making up a, but that song where he's like, Wong Sung Sung Salai, but he's talking about his girlfriend poisoning his Chinese. So it's funny, but it's actually a concept and it's a story. And that's what I loved hearing the stories like that's respectfully. Yeah. You don't talk shit in your music and I love it. It's I'm sick, it's got bars, it's got flows, <laughs> but you've got concepts. Obviously you're gonna big yourself up, but I feel like we just have stub substance that not a lot of people were ready for, where now mm. they're kind of ready, everyone's kind of turning around because everyone's bored of drill and people in masks and not getting to know the artist. In Birmingham, we kind of lay our heart on our sleeve. You you really get to know the artist yeah. through their music. This is who we are. Yeah, mm. so that was moment, uh, a moment of peace for me, hearing Birmingham music in London. Mm. Nice. Um, Daniel, <laughs> what do you think the impact of digital platforms was on the exposure of Birmingham's music industry? I feel like it was, I think it was everything. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I think at the time, like I remember, like my kind of part in this is, I was shooting the music videos at the very, very beginning. Mm. So this was at a point where there was no real YouTube. Like YouTube was there, but it was still a case of, I, I remember you just had to, there was, there was no music videos, it was a picture. So if you had a song, you just put your picture on YouTube <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and you had the song playing in the background. Okay. You know what That's I mean? Right. So I remember I was, at the, I was at the beginning where we first started to kind of clock on and all right, we can make our own music videos. So that was a shift of letting Birmingham really start competing on a kind of global scale because it was like even the conversation still carries on to today but the big part of the conversation was London's not letting us in yeah. mm. you know what I mean there was a big massive London scene and Birmingham always felt like a, a, a dirty stepchild you know what I mean it was just like no matter it's what like we, the mistress yeah, yeah it's like no matter mistress. what we did you fuck with us but you don't want us to <laughs> you don't really want it full time and it was easy to ignore it was easy to ignore when there was Sorry. no visuals you know what I mean <laughs> no, but, it's, but it's true but it's true it's true, there was, it was easy to ignore when there was no visuals. So as soon as we started to kind of um, create music videos and stuff now, start manipulating some of these digital platforms, it kind of took away that, that, that kind of divide, you know what I mean, where people mm. could just appreciate the music for what it is. Because sometimes you're hearing something or seeing something and you don't even know where it's from, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And it kind of just even the level, level the um, playing field, as it were. So for the Birmingham scene, I think that was really the transition where it kind of took artists from, from here to like, all right, and we're really going to play now. Do you know what I'm saying? We're really going to compete. P1 Manon. Exactly. Yeah. So like yeah. even before, look, Beats TV. Beats TV. Like, yeah, Beats, yeah, yeah. Beats, Beats TV was yeah. one, of our earliest, yeah. one of our earliest platforms, Beats TV. And it was mad. It was so early. The, it was a lot of the London content was on there as well. Mm -hmm. So right. this was before, this was before the, the London big ones as well, before the London big platforms. We had Beats TV. And it was a way to kind of, create our power. I feel mm. like Birmingham, we really, we really understood that this is our chance yeah, this <laughs> to is compete. What we got, yeah. This is our chance to compete and we really kind of use that digital space to say, okay, we're here. Mm. Nice. Casey, what do you think, in, in your opinion, what is the, um, the coverage of Birmingham's music like across the UK? Um, I, think, I think now there's, a, there's an interesting kind of um, 
landscape in the UK music scene because people who do transcend their cities, not just Birmingham, into the, the kind of mainstream media, in many ways, it's a, it's a bit of a cheat code. So, like, Millions is a, is a great MC, but part of why he does well is because he sounds different to most of what you hear on the radio, because he sounds like a brummy. Bugsy Malone does really well because he sounds like a mank. You know what I mean? Like, it, it does something different. So when you hear Kano, Ghetto, Digger D, Millions, it, it's like, it breaks that kind of, like, monotony. So now, actually, I think that that sound of not being the same as what you feel like everybody else sounds like, it serves really well. The, the issue is, the kind of new issue is, with that in mind, once you've got millions and you've got mist, people feel like, well, maybe we don't need more than millions and mist. Like, we've got our Brummie representation. So it then has the, the, the kind of, it's the glass ceiling thing. It's do people break through the glass ceiling and reach down, or do they break through the glass ceiling and go, yo, quick, build back the ceiling, because <laughs> we're, we're in the room now. Um, I think the representation of Birmingham music across the country is strong. I think it's positive, and I think it's down to talent. Like, and it's not just Birmingham, you know, places I've named some Manchester, Liverpool at the moment, doing, making lots of great urban music. You're seeing stuff come from, like, South Wales. That is, that is strong. I think, I think the reality is, if you're a connoisseur, if you like the music, you will find the music from everywhere. You will be listening to the MC from Birmingham and the MC from Newcastle. If you're not a connoisseur, then you'll listen to what gets played on the radio. Yeah. Um, and so then it comes, and, and, and as an artist, the question becomes, what do you want to be? Do you want to be heard by everybody? And if you do, you can, but you have to do that, make that compromise of, well, how do I water down my thing a little bit so that it, it booms on not just one extra, now it's booming on radio one? Or do you say, do you know what, I want to make the best music that I can? And when we talk about the pioneers, when you talk about even going back to what Daps was saying, the music that his parents would have listened to, we, we came up on people who were uncompromising, totally uncompromising. The, the likes are still... I'm wearing a Benjamin Zephaniah T-shirt. Yeah, we come up on people who said, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to say what needs to be said, and if you love it, you love it, and if you don't love it, I feel your business, that not my problem. Now you have a question, do I want to be a millionaire of music? OK, let me get a single on the hook and a little bit of a popular... And maybe I can make loads of money, or do I want to be, you know... Do I want to be the best MC that I can be? Do I want to make the mm. baddest tune that I can make? Or the most, the, the, the one that's the most relatable? So, so the thing is with your song, Murder, mm -hmm. what was cold about it is, it was, it was about what you're saying. So you say the word murder and it's stark and people go, murder, oh my God. But really it's about, people say, oh, you killed it, man. Mm. You killed you it, man, that. you murdered that man. Mm. And, and what, you, what your daughter did on it is it took all of the harshness out of the idea of murder yeah. and made it like, this is like a... I want to be the best I can yeah, be. 100%. You get me? So it gave, it gave, and for people who knew that, like who that sound was, it's like, this is the reason you want to kill it yeah. for your daughter. Yeah. So that made it a different package. So it's like, do you want to make the best song you can make? Do you want to make the best music you can make? Even, and there's different types of music in it. There's ni nice, nice, lovey, love music. There's bad, 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 tough guy music. If you want to make the baddest tough guy music, be the baddest tough guy you want to be, but you're not necessarily going to go number one. But we have, we have, artists in Birmingham who are rapping about love and it's beautiful. Mm. We have artists in Birmingham who are rapping about bad things and it's bad, mm. you know, but we've got MCs like Tremendous, mm. who I'm sure I've seen his name on something around here. Nobody can't MC with Tremendous. Mm -hmm. Pick your MC, pick them from mm -hmm. L London, Manchester, Brooklyn, Chicago, pick them, put them in a room with Tremendous, they're gonna go, rah, she's sick. Mm -hmm. Regardless. I saw her at Boomtown, she was with Barrington Levy. Like, he spit, brought her out. Yeah, like yeah, she yeah, knows, she was Tremendous knows, she could she, with her image and all of that, she could make something a little bit more palatable and she could make loads, but she just, she's just sick and she wants to be sick. She don't want to MC, you know, wishy-washy, da-da-da-da-da. So, for me, the reception of Birmingham music is positive. We've got artists who are potentially, you know, can, can blow and go as, as far as they want to go. And we've got also amazing, talented artists who contribute to, if you want to listen to good music, they're making good music. Mm -hmm. But you know what, as well, sorry to interrupt, Jump just in, to interject in the com open conversation. Don't you feel like when we were growing up, grime was new? Like, it was, when we were in school, it was new. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. The scene's growing now. Like, we're, we're growing with the scene now. Skepta's in his 40s, you know, Wiley's nearly mid, mid 40s, 50s. Like <laughs> mid no, but we're growing now. At Wiley Live. Like, now <laughs> we're at a point where we can say so much. We, we can actually score them. We can start making songs again. It doesn't need to all be the same because mm. we're growing. Like, even me, I can't listen to the drill anymore. 
it's the vibration's too low for me and the killing and this thing. You know what I mean? I can't listen to it, the vibration's too low. So I, yeah, like you've got Afrobeat, you've got, if you want bad man music, you go to Jamaica. You want to feel nice but still whiny yourself, you go to Afrobeats. Like, yeah, I think we're growing. It's, it's important that we, we grow with the scene and mm. teach mm. how, in Birmingham, we don't have mentorship. We don't get a lot of funding, unfortunately. We don't, here there's, in Birmingham we have Punch. Here they've got Urban Development, I Love Life, this and that, they get money. No one puts money you know into what, Birmingham I, as well. Do you know what I say though? This they want is, free. This is me as a Brummy, right? We, we say that in Birmingham, when we look to London or maybe look to Manchester. Ask them in Coventry if Birmingham get money. Ask them in Wolverhampton if Birmingham get yeah, money. No, no. Ask them in West Bromwich if Birmingham get money because we've, mm. we've I think, we, you could always have more in it, like, mm -hmm. regardless of how much you have. Get involved in politics. <laughs> get involved in politics, mm -hmm. because that is where the money comes from. I hear you. I personally don't want yeah. money or politics, so, so. but I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. The area, I hear you. the community, the mayor, at the end of the day, we can talk all, all we want. At the end of the day, the money comes from being involved in politics and being involved in Mm -hmm. Which goes back to, respectfully though, that goes back to proximity, doesn't it? Because where is all of the politics and business in our country? We can walk to it from here. Mm. I agree with 100% of, of what you're saying, yeah? But we can talk all we want. The bottom line is, we have to get political. There's Facts. only two ways to power. No matter how bad you are, there's mm. only two ways to power. One mm. is political, the other one is economic. Mm -hmm. Fair. Every, every town and every city has MPs, and your MP wants to get voted, mm -hmm. so use that power. Mm -hmm. You know, so we want this... We don't but have enough but, of them. But, but we have that, artists. we have that, which is why, in, in reality, this is my point, if you step outside of Birmingham into its localities, Coventry will tell you we don't get money like Birmingham. Mm -hmm. If you go to Manchester and you step outside to Cheshire, they say we don't get money like Manchester. The reality is... No one's going to get money like London, regardless of what you do, because it's where the money is and it's where the power is. We we have enough, I believe, to in in this day and age, you don't need massive money to make great music. You can make great music in your bedroom. So then the question is, what do you do with it next? We could always do with more funding. We could always do with more platforms and all of that stuff. But I think what Dan said about if you look at like uh, the YouTube and and that kind of aspect of things. You can reach now. So, so Miss probably never had any funding in his life. He probably doesn't know what we're talking about if we talk about funding. What he did is he made a couple of bangers and he jumped on P110 and then he got onto FBTV and then he got on. It, it's about reach and it's about work and all of that stuff. And this is a, a conversation that, that we were all having earlier about who's doing the work. I feel and you can see who's doing the work because they're, they're reaping the rewards. What I want to say, I feel like, like this Birmingham, London uh, narrative. I feel like it's just a mindset. It's a mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not from London, and that doesn't matter to me because I know how I make money from music is by sitting down in my room or wherever I am, taking my phone out, listening to music, uh, dwell, dwelling deep in my soul and writing something down and then putting it out and then it will make a penny or two. I don't have to be in London to be able to do that. I don't have to be in America to be able to do that. I think like our mentality as a whole is very victimizing mm. and very like, oh no, we don't get this, we don't get that. And like what you rightfully said, if you go to somewhere like Coventry or Wolves or West Brom, they will say the same thing about Birmingham. Mm. You look at London and you see London as the big brother and yeah, London does this and London does that and we want to do this and we want to do that. But really and truly, it's all about quality music if you're in this field, just work hard. Uh -huh. just, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I was working for years before anyone took any notice and I made one song. It just so happens I made one song and then it all changed. But I could have probably changed that on the 10th song or the 15th song or the second song. It doesn't matter as long just as you're working. working. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. A lot of us from Birmingham have this mind state of, because we're not from there. And what Roxanne was saying is true because we don't have those facilities, so we don't have the record labels, we don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the enough radio stations, enough uh, punch records, so to speak. We don't have enough. We only have a few. But that's not an excuse, really and truly. Just work hard. Just work hard. If it, my son, my son plays for uh, Wolves. Wolverhampton. Uh, he's eight years old. Yeah, he's just got signed. He's not playing for Arsenal. He's not playing for Chelsea. I've been at Arsenal, I've been at Chelsea and I've battered them, yeah, beat them bad and see my son crying, yo son, it's all right. But 
you start somewhere, innit? Like, mm. can he moan now and say, nah, Dad, I need you to move to London because <laughs> I need to play for Arsenal or can you need to move to London because I need to play for Chelsea? Bro, you, you are where you are. Just work hard mm -hmm. and before you know it, something will happen. You got I believe my, my parents always told me, you got to let, you got to leave space for God to make magic as well. You know what I mean? You can't just, Ooh, you can't just think that everything's going to go to plan. You know what I mean? Ask for something. I've been after to just work hard. And then what will happen is you'll give space and time for God to put the magic in. You know what I mean? And make the magic happen. It's called a miracle. You know what I mean? Make mm. it happen. But it's not going to happen when we're so busy comparing ourselves. What is 100%. it? Com comparison is a thief yeah. of joy. 100%. It's the truth. It's the and truth. Like, why are we watching everybody else? Just work. Hard, man. And then London, they watch America. Through. It's the same. And, it's and London, and London are doing that for America, yeah. but I think they've stopped now. I yeah. feel like London have stopped now. Because they've built themselves. London are music. on their own vibe. You know what I mean? They've got their own scene, their own infrastructure, their own rappers. They're doing their thing. Birmingham, Manchester, Manchester. What's happening is even though Birmingham's a uh, second, city. second city, Manchester's actually the second city. If we're going to be totally honest. Relax, and man. It, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Is. And you know why it is? You know why it is? Say, not out loud, man. Not yeah. out loud, man. Yeah, as well. Come on, man. I'm too honest with this, man. You know why it is? It's because they don't have that victimising energy that Birmingham yeah, have. True. They don't have that. They get on with it. You know what I mean? They just get on with it. And, and the reality like... is, bro, there's a, there is an artist emceeing in Birmingham right now saying that he can't do what JK's doing because he's from Birmingham, but JK's doing it. They're saying that they can't do what Millions is doing because they're from Birmingham, but Millions Same. is doing it. They're saying they can't do what Mister's doing. I used to do that. I used to do it. I've got, three, I've got three kids. I'm 14, yes. 8 and 3 years old. I've got three kids. You like, look good I'm, for it, man. I'm fully hands-on in, in their life. I'm fully hands-on, like, fully hands-on. And sometimes I think to myself, you know what? Oh, I'm 36, man, bloody hell. Like, I've seen other guys doing their thing and they don't have the responsibilities and they don't have the commitments that I have, so they can just flex. They can be at studio until three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and not go home and not even shower, just grind mode. Yeah, you can do that. But I used, to, I used to hold feelings towards that and think, oh, how come I can't do that? How come I can't do that? But then I flipped it and I realised, but bro, everyone's journey is different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I have three kids, they don't have three kids, but you don't, yeah, but you don't have what I have. Hmm. You know what I mean? You don't have that wake up in the morning, hello, daddy, you're all right, daddy. Yeah, yeah, really you, you don't have that. You just, you're just right. picking and choosing what you see as joy when really and truly, as I said, there's beauty behind all of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So instead of focusing on what you don't have, let's focus on what we do have. And what 100%. you do have is a voice. What you do have is an opportunity. What you do have is time. You know what I mean? Like, make it happen. I don't really like the victimising attitude that we have. And a lot of us have it. A and lot of us have it. I feel like it's... And bringing it back to the book, you know, it's, and, and, the, and the documentary, the final thing in the book is, the outro in the book is about this. We can look at an MC like Devilman. We can look at an MC like Vader. And we can say, what would have happened if they were born 20 years later? And they would be stars or whatever. But actually, what we can look at is say, that's had Zola. Mm. And so, he, so because of that, He's inspired to do something, mm -hmm. and now T Rhodes has that. Mm -hmm. And there's, some, there's a youth now, he's 14 years old, watching Millions or watching Mist, or, and they're going, I'm going to be an MC, and they know they can do it. So we really, we're in the best era that there's ever been to be an MC in Birmingham. In 10 years, it might be better, but right now, it's the best it's ever been. Oh, we've got better platforms, right. we've got better exposure, M music is easier and cheaper to make than it's ever been. Are you going to make your talent work for you? So I was going to ask to all of you, where do you think the scene in Birmingham is going to go over the next five to ten years? What's the next step? I think it's already mainstream. Georgia Smith. Everyone knows Georgia Smith. She's a Brummie. Um, it's mainstream. It's just, like, like Dap said, I think we need to drop this victimisation attitude. We're very sensitive. So let's be <laughs> honest, the man them will come to Birmingham, the girls will like them, the man them get upset, so then now there's like a beef between Birmingham and London. You know what it is, it's ridiculous. Or Brummies, we like to show, yeah, we're bad too, where we need to drop that. We mm. let the music and the talent speak for itself. I, I, I want to come back to Birmingham. Like, I'm, I'm trying to reverse it because London's good, but it's like a rat race here. Yeah, I, I feel like I've, I haven't stopped since I got here. <laughs> and I'm 35 soon. I just want to chill and enjoy, remember who I am again, go back to my roots. But I think the music will be, I think we'll have more artists. And I want to say artists because we keep saying MCs, mm -hmm. where we're more than MCs because yep. it's art that people are producing. Yeah. So I want to say we're going to have world-class artists. Yeah. I feel like Birmingham will be 
where Birmingham wants to be. If Birmingham <laughs> wants to work hard and get off there, you know, and put some work in, then that will have a repercussion. Every action has a reaction. Mm. You know what I mean? So if you want to work hard, you're going to get results. If you don't want to work hard, guess what's going to happen? Like, this is just it. And I just so, want to add on, coming back to Birmingham, I think a lot of people don't come back to help a little bit. Yeah. Or mentor. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Soon we'll be mentors. Even yeah. Nisha, like, there's a lot yeah. of us that yeah. can help the talent and mentor and, and, and how to do things. Because a lot of people don't know the business because it's not there. Yeah, Daniel. So I think we've got to go back and build up our community. No, I think it's very similar. I think that with the invention of more things happening, especially with opportunities, especially with platforms like what you've spoken about, I think that notion of you're from here and you're from there and you're from there, I just think that's getting blurred a lot now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because everyone's, really matter. everyone's making falling. quality yeah, yeah. art. Yeah, everyone's it doesn't really matter. quality music. So when you turn on the radio, back in the day, it used to be a shock, like, oh, my God, this is from yeah. Brock, this is yeah, outside yeah, yeah. of London. Like, now, it's just a case of it's good music yeah. and people are checking for artists and I feel like that's what's yeah. going to develop over the next Sorry, respect, years. man. Thank you for your contribution. Sorry, man. I just want to say as well, like, I remember one time I was uh, talking about Birmingham scene and I was talking about my position and where I felt like I was. I was talking to my brother about it and he, was, and he replied to me, this is my brother, same mom, same dad. He's not even in the music industry, he's just a fan, yeah? He said to me, why do you always talk about Birmingham? Like, the world is a big place. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you only talking about Birmingham? Mm -hmm. And then when he said that, my head just went... Bruh, bruh, bruh. I was like, whoa, like, yeah, I'm, I'm awake now. I get mm. it. Like, why have I just limited well, you myself? Why yourself? Why have I just limited myself to... What did you say? 1.2? 1. 1. Yeah, 1.2 1. 2 million. Yeah. What's that? In this world of billions of people? <clears throat> why have I limited myself to that area and just so proud of this area that I need to hold up this area? Bro, make music and just do your thing. Like, it will, all of that will happen afterwards. Yeah, he's from Birmingham. Like, all of that will happen afterwards. Mm. To talk about Jude Bellingham from Birmingham, he's from Stourbridge. He's from Stourbridge. But, <laughs> but, you, but you, because, you, because <laughs> you're so <laughs> prolific, because you're so <laughs> prolific in what you do, now they've claimed you. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. They facts, claim yeah. you when you work hard. Facts. Work hard and they'll claim you. Yeah, man. I feel like, what is Birmingham, Birmingham. Stu Birmingham stuff like? Just we just need we just need the ones who are from Birmingham just to work hard, and it will all come into fruition. We want more infrastructure in our in our area. We want more money flowing in. Just work harder and be a bit more cleaner. I feel like we're just a bit too hood. We are. Like, honestly, we God, are. Like, I feel like we are. as a city we're just a bit too hood. This isn't like trying better. to like like bash our, bash down our city because yeah we are talented. We've got amazing artists from there, but I think the difference between us and the Londoners is the Londoners actually look at this as a business. Like, they look at this mm. as a business and they make money, they move business savvy and they, they get money yeah, from it. Yeah, to jump on that, because we, we did have the conversation earlier and I think a lot of that is because we got exposed to finances later. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so while we were struggling to get funding and investment, we was at a point where, but we're going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So we was doing the same thing, but it just looked different. That DIY you know kind of mean? vibe. Yeah, yeah. What these Londoners are rapping about, they're not as ghetto as gangsters as they make out, no offence. So in Birmingham, there's not much going on. People are thinking they have to act no, and, and be very hood. I, think, I understand what you guys are saying, but actually there's smoke scene. How so? Musicians from London, you know, you want to be able to play Prove yourself to be approved by facts, yeah, yeah. So, no, and absolutely. vice versa. That, that works both ways, you know. So, really, it is just one scene, mm. it's one scene, yeah. That's it's what you're saying, scene. yeah. So, we're one music, we are one people, yeah. Mm. And just, I would just recognize that it's our music scene, yeah, yeah man. Is. Yeah, man, love that. Mm -hmm. It's true, it's the, the truth. Is there anything you want to say? Yeah, I think the future for. for Birmingham music looks like Daps on the Map, JK, it looks like Mist, it looks like Shandanan, it looks like Fiasco is having a resurgence in her career, it looks like uh, Trappy, it looks, it looks like Millions, it looks like... Anyone you who know, wants to work. It looks like there's enough talented space for everyone. Like, this making is what great music. Everyone feels Mish like there's not enough again. space. There's enough space for everyone. You know what I mean? And everyone reverts back to London. But if you think about London, London have got London to think about. There's so many artists from London that they've got to think about why are they going to come out of their city and think about Manchester and Birmingham and why? They don't need to, everything's there. 
and it's not for us to moan about that. It's for us to just work because it's all one, as as, yeah. as my man over there said. It's it's all one. Like so, I feel yeah. like I feel like the moment that all of us, and it's not all of us because some of us do move like this. But when all of us move, like it's not a victimization. It's not a victimization thing. It's just music. It's just art, mm. and we are artists. And like me, if I'm making a tune, I'll I don't know, like how an artist would sketch the drawing first. I'll sketch it, and then the next day, I might go back and add two more lines, and then the next day, I might add six more lines, and then the next day, I might not do nothing, and then hmm. the next day, I might add four more lines, and before you know it, the art piece is finished, and then, yeah, that's my art, and then I, uh, I present my art to the people. It's about putting out art, if you're an artist, put out art, and I feel like yep. we're just focused on the game and the, the loopholes and the, the, I don't know, the plus ones and everything like that, when it's, where it's really, it's all stems that from the art form, is if you class yourself as an artist. Yep. I feel like when we start thinking like that, money won't matter because it will be coming in. Status won't matter because you'll be valid. None of it will matter because it will all be in your favour, but it just comes from... And that's why my answer to the question is... That's on the map. It's Jordan Emmanuel. No. It's Lady Sanity. You, you just it's Indigo to... Marshall. That's that's what that's what the Birmingham, it's it's anyone the wonder is from Wolverhampton still. It doesn't but, matter. But you know I'm claiming him. Yeah. That's what the Birmingham future looks like. Yeah. Jordan Emmanuel in in one title. Yeah. Cause cause the boy can rap. Yeah, he can. And he's rapping. Okay. And he's putting out work. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Okay, we've got like two minutes left. Are there any questions that you guys want to ask? Okay, is you guys the lady in red? Lady in red. Okay. My title. So I'm just bringing these back. Apparently. This Mm. It's okay. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, you mentioned um, to kind of um, go on from that. You mentioned you've mentioned your family a lot. Mm. Yeah, I know it's that. Stories, it's beautiful. Yeah. The song about you, the, 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 the yeah. Involved and everything. Your nan and the dis. Yeah. Advert and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, are you are, you, are your tracks? Yeah, they do, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Watch the latest listen, single chord that. Now. You could listen to them now in here, yeah, you could. Watch the latest single chord. My, oh, my latest single is called Veronica's Son, because obviously I'm Veronica's son. <laughs> but uh, my biggest song that took over from Murder is called Beautiful, and basically what that is, I have a partner, <laughs> I have a partner who also does music as well. Her name's Feliba, and she had a song. Uh, she had a song from a producer, and she just had the chorus on there. And we be driving along in our travels day in, day out. I'm saying, Fee, what are you doing with this song, man? Like, yo, this song's wicked, man. Like, trust me, Fee, I feel like this song can go far, man. Like, what are you doing? Oh, Dan, I don't. I've only wrote the chorus. I haven't wrote the verses. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Oh, do you want it? Have it? I said, what? Give me that, then I'll have it. Keep you on the chorus, and I'll put the verses down. It just so happens that that song is the biggest song that I've ever done in my life now. And what and what and what the 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 message is behind the video, what I did is I took this uh genius's idea and he told me to take my phone out and turn it to the side. And if you turn it to the side and you film you film anything, it will come out perfect for the screen. So it won't come out it will come out horizontal. Is it horizontal? Vertical? Portrait. Horizontal? Horizontal. Portrait, yeah. It will come out properly and you can watch landscape. it. Landscape. So, landscape. Landscape, yeah. So I, I went, uh, we went to Future Ventura. Me, my, my eldest daughter, my son, and my partner went there. Oh, the, she was pregnant at the time. And I just filmed the whole experience, just everything. Like them jumping in the pool, and playing, her pregnant, everything. And also showed it when we got back as well. So. At the time of the holiday, I think she was like six, seven months pregnant, so she was very close. So when we got home, I just carried on filming, sh seeing her being sick in the toilet, seeing her going <laughs> midwife operation. Around this time, it was COVID, so we didn't want to go to the hospital. She was adamant that she wanted to have a home birth. So I filmed all of that and put it out very reluctantly. Didn't want to do it because I'm a very private person and I'm uh, just like my mom, take off my mom very... A uh, proud person as well, so I didn't really want to show that much vulnerability, you know what I mean? And then I had to 
have some self, uh, what's the word, soul searching and realize when was the last time you was vulnerable, really, really, really vulnerable with music and you didn't want to release it because you were so vulnerable, you were so scared of the opinion of people. And I thought, murder was the last time. I didn't want people to even look at my daughter, really. But at the same time, I've made this song with my daughter. I have to, I have to share it. And I was scared, but I shared it. And lo and behold, big success. This fast forward 2020 now, five years later, you're back in the same, you're back in the same mode. Like I don't want to release this. I even told Daniel because. Uh, I sent all the footage to Daniel Evan. Daniel edited it with me. He came to my house. He shot another scene for me and he edited it. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to release this now, you know, bro. Like, showing my woman, like, basically having a baby. Like, this is too heavy for YouTube. I can't do this. Like, this is for me. And God spoke to me and told me to just release it, man, Daniel. You have to drop this tune because this is art. You know what I'm saying? Little sketch, little sketch. This is, this, that video took me, what? Probably like about six months to make, you know? Little two minute here, little 30 seconds here, little 40 seconds here, and lo and behold, the video's done. So, to answer your question, yeah, my music does reflect my, I don't know, demeanor or personality, because I, I've, I come from a background of uh, my dad's side. My dad's side's very, very wicked, you know what I mean? Like, they run, they run, they run, they run everything that you can imagine. You know what I mean? And I was like the, I don't know, the, the, the good boy out of that operation who decided to just follow his passion and follow his dream. And I have, I have my kids listening to my music as well, so I'm not really into the swearing and the cursing because they listen to it. So I think being vulnerable and being brave, being vulnerable is, is like my magic. Mm -hmm. It's my secret weapon, secret weapon, so to speak, because through doing that, and reflecting my, my, my personal life onto the art form, I think it's been my greatest success. And yeah, it, it does marinate. It does, yeah, it does. Have we got time for one more question? Is that right? Thank yeah. you, mate. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love this discussion. Thank you, Mike. Um, the question that I wanted to ask, I don't know if you've spoken about like, doing things working within the work, which I get, because I've been to London like, when I was 18, from yeah. Birmingham, and I've been to yeah. but Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, facts. I think I start, I'll, I'll go first because I'll forget. <clears throat> For me, because I moved when I was 20, so we're quite similar. For me, what I found I'd, London didn't have for me was like community. I know it's like a one of them words. Authentic community, like in London, in Birmingham, we've all known each other. For years, you've known me in, since I was in school, 12, 11, mm. MC. Like we've all, although we're not in each other's lives that much, we we know it. Everyone knows each other. Security. Everyone's respectful. We all know Security. who's bad and who's good. In London, it's it's not like that. There's no community. You've got your friends. Do you know what I mean? Or you, you everyone's not everyone. Sorry, for my experience, because you're right, not everyone. But my experience is quite opportunist, and everyone is clout chasing, and some people will pretend to be your friend, and da 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 da. Where for me, the family. I don't even want to say community, family. When I, when I go home to Brum, my heart's warm because I feel content, I feel safe. Family, the family-ness mm. for Birmingham music for me. And then that goes back into, like you say, the humour. Most of Brum is Jamaican. Jamaicans are hilarious. Mm. They like, if you're dark, you're sooty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I've got an uncle called Barky because his voice is deep. He sounds like a dog. Like, they're rude with it. Me, I used to have big teeth. My name was Roxanne Big Teeth, my uncle. Like, it's funny. It is what it is. You've got a peg leg. Woody, you know, like, Jamaicans, they don't care. You know, in London, yeah, you, yeah, sorry. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hear it. I hear it. So real. So <laughs> real. Um, Family, for me. Yeah, I, so I think it goes beyond the music and it's what makes Birmingham, Birmingham. And for me, if you walk through um, uh, Centenary Square, you come past the, 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 the council house, the art gallery, some big glass building. You've got Jamaicans, Africans, Asians, white people, Irish people, Polish people. The thing is with Birmingham is all of it sits together. 
there's no like there are there are there are places and and aspects that feel quite discreet but you can literally step from being engulfed in one culture into another by foot you walk in there there and there i grew up in Nietzsche's in birmingham in Nietzsche's, you had the 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 introduction of Caribbean people into the community. In fact, first you had the introduction factory of Irish workers, people into the community, workers. factory workers close to town. Then you had Caribbean people. Then you had Southeast Asian people. Then you had Eastern European people. Then you had Somalian people. And all of these people are just layered. It's like stacked up. And maybe it's because Birmingham is a big city, but a small city. What you have is so many different flavors just, just dropped on top of each other. And flavors is a really horrible word to use. It's quite a colonialist word to use. But what I mean by that is you have so much difference and genuine diversity, not diversity like, oh, who ticks a box and who, just genuine difference. Altogether, that you lose sight of the difference. We become a Brummie, not a this person from here in Birmingham. And so what you get there is culture, like genuine culture, not how can I play up to what my culture is supposed to look like or, and that to me creates real genuine art because it's, it does influence it's influence, it's like, you know, why is the Bolte from Birmingham? Do you know what I mean? When it could be from anywhere else in the world, it's from Birmingham, it's a twist. And the twist exists because you take people from somewhere and you put them in somewhere else. They can be themselves, but they also can be influenced by everything else. And what we have in Birmingham is a power of influence from so many different cultures yeah. that we get something that's unique because you have, it's not isolated. It's all just right. And then you get to carry on, Birmingham. To carry on from... Uh, Casey's point as well. Uh, I think what Birmingham has as well is a lack of infrastructure. And what that does, it kind of creates creativity. Mm. It kind of creates, all right, cool, we don't have this, so what are you going to do about it? And as DIY. I said, not everyone likes to be victimised. Some people say, all right, I'm going to do something about this and I'm still going to create art. But because of the lack of infrastructure, I think how we work that in our favour, we turn that into creativity. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to a lot of the Birmingham artists' music, it sounds a lot of it's struggle from a pay, place of struggle, but that's only because of lack of uh, infrastructure. But I think we turn that into uh, a plus rather mm -hmm. than a negative, you know? I think we turned it around. Well, a lot, uh, some of us did, yeah. We, turned wear it, it around. we wear it like a nice yeah. suit. And, and, and use it to our advantage rather than uh, our deficit. Yeah. I, I've already seen that the time's running out. Yeah, so yeah. I'm good. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so time's up. Um, the film is available online. Um, it's on Link Up TV, all episodes, so you can go and watch that now. You can also buy the book online. Um, there's a QR code outside if you want to scan that and buy it straight away. Uh, but thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.